Hi, so I'm really enjoying this actually, and it's kind of learning together for me. Because when I began making wind turbines, I really knew jack about them, okay? And I've been making the turbines, listening to the comments, making changes to things, and reading. Because that's how you learn. In my mind, that's how you learn. I think you learn better by doing, and so I tend to do. I do stuff and then have a read and a think about it, listen to what people are saying to me about stuff, and mull it over until I come to some kind of decision about what I think about something. And that's kind of cool, I think, and I think it's a good process for learning any new skill. So I've been sharing this journey with you, and we've been building that one kilowatt hour generator, and a common comment is, that'll never do a kilowatt hour. And of course, that preys on one's mind a bit, so I had a look at the theoretical limits of these things, whether it could actually, in this particular design, achieve one kilowatt hour or not. And one of the things I looked at, of course, was the Betts law. This is the law that governs the amount of energy that can be extracted from any wind turbine independent of its shape. It doesn't really matter what geometry you use, it gives you an indication of how much energy it's possible, if it were 100% efficient, to extract. So the first question you have to have really is, is it possible? Can this actually be done? So let me give you a look at what Betts law actually looks like. So what it comes down to actually is this, that the maximum power of your like Pmax is equal to 16 over 27 times a half times rho d h v cubed. Okay, this bit here is the uh, Betts factor. Now it makes sense if you think about it. In order for wind to flow, there can't be a blockage on the other side. So the wind speed can't be zero, or it would represent a blockage. So there has to be wind flow. And that limitation means that effectively, any turbine design is limited to 59.3%. So the power that it can draw at maximum is 59.3% of the available power. Now this row, this is the air density. That air density is important because if you think about it, it's the mass of push against the rotor blades. We have more mass, more push, then it's going to have an effect. So the air density is really important. This D and H, these are the diameter of the rotor and the height of the rotor in meters. And they obviously make sense because you, the you've got a bigger rotor, a bigger area it can cover, then it's going to be able to extract more energy. So that makes a lot of sense. And this V squared, is a uh, V cubed, sorry, is wind speed. And that's another one that makes obvious sense. You've got more wind, you've got more mass, it's all pushing through. So the actual expression makes a ton of sense in terms of the factors that are there. But of course, it's an awful lot of math. Now, it comes down to something really simple, actually. So what it comes down to is the maximum power that can be withdrawn is equal to one, uh, sorry, 0 0.18 times the diameter of your rotor times the height of your rotor times the velocity of the wind cubed. That's just all those figures put together and making the assumption that the density of air is the same. Of course it isn't, but we'll take that assumption that at sea level that's the density of air. Um, we multiply that out and that's what we get. So it's a really easy little bit of math to be able to plug in and get the expressions that you need in order to work out from a given rotor diameter and height what the maximum power would be for a given wind speed. Now, if we take the wind speed at 4 meters per second, then what we get is 5.5 watts. That's how much energy is maximum generated from that rotor that we're using. And remember, the rotor is 0 0.6 meters by 0 0.8 meters. It's 0 0.6 meters high and 0.8 meters across on the diameter. Then we get at 10 meters per second, 86.4 watts. And at 25 meters per second, we get 1.35 kilowatts. Now this speed, 25 meters per second, 
It's the speed that commercial turbines are rated at. If you look at the power curves on commercial turbines rated at one kilowatt hour, you'll see that they give the speed at 25 uh, meters per second to give you one kilowatt hour. Now, obviously, that is the maximum we can get out of it. Now, most commercial turbines that you find in wind farms are somewhere between 75 and 80 percent efficient. So if we take 80 percent of that, then we actually get 1080 watts, or 1.08 kilowatts. Okay, so I get my information from Wikipedia on that particular one, so I'm not 100% sure how accurate that is, but that's what Wikipedia told me the formula was, so I just followed that through. Now, it's really interesting, I think, to answer a question, is it possible? to get a kilowatt hour out of the generator that we've designed? And the answer is yes, it is possible if we get 80% efficiency. And of course, that's quite a challenge for something that's made out of trash when you think that the top end commercial wind turbines are getting 80% efficient. So we do have a, still a bit of a challenge on, but it is certainly possible to do it. And that's kind of encouraging to hear, or at least I thought it was encouraging to hear, which is why I'm sharing it with you. Um, you can probably hear the rain. There's a lot of rain and no wind, which is, really annoying but what can you do about it so it's possible to that this will be a kilowatt hour generator certainly if we can get that 80 percent efficiency now normally with savonius type rotors like this where you have a, uh, a savonius type barrel rotor apparently you can expect half of that so we got uh, 1.35 what we would expect from the savonius type is um what is that about 625 watts at maximum something like that Ours isn't a Savonius type, obviously, and we are making the argument, remember, that these magnets on the rim are more efficient than magnets on the axle. So that's what we're aiming to prove, if you like, or we're aiming to, to get some demonstration of that we can get the efficiency out of it from the magnets on the rim as opposed to the magnets on the, on the axle. Now, I'm hoping, I suppose, yes, that, that's a fair word, I'm hoping that that is right, that we'll improve efficiency because of magnet position. And if we do, then we can achieve 80%. We'll be in the top range of commercial for um, a scrap-built turbine, which I think is an awesome re result, really. And it is most certainly possible. Anyway, I thought I would share that with you, and thank you very much for watching.